The Great Sand Dunes National Park and Preserve in Colorado is located in the expansive San Luis Valley. And yes, it is indeed a very strange place to find some of the tallest sand dunes in the country nestled near the Santa de Cristo Mountains. In 2004, the park and preserve was redesignated as a national park, making it one of the more recent national parks added in the United States. With nearly 150,000 acres to explore and 30 square miles of sand dunes, there's a variety of things to do and see at the Great Sand Dunes. It's like no other national park in the country, and certainly unlike any other landscape in the state of Colorado. If you're planning a trip to the Great Sand Dune National Park, I'm sharing a complete guide as a Colorado local to help you make the most of it. The Great Sand Dunes National Park and Preserve is seemingly in the middle of nowhere. Some of the closest Colorado communities are Crestone, Hooper, or Mosca, with Alamosa being the largest town in the vicinity. If you're coming from Denver, it's approximately a three to four hour drive depending on which route you take. And from Colorado Springs, you can go south on I-25 through Pueblo, or take the route through Canyon City to Salida, and then head south, which is the route that we took. Arriving near the Great Sand Dunes looks and feels like a sparsely populated desert. However, this is actually the preserve that leads to the national park. The drive to the Great Sand Dune consists of a diverse landscape of grasslands from the San Juan Mountains to the San Luis Valley. Located in the Colorado Mountains, the Great Sand Dunes Park elevation ranges from 7,500 to over 13,000 feet. If you're visiting from sea level, you may want to take an extra day or two just to get used to the elevation. As a local couple who recently visited the Great Sand Dune National Park, here is our best tips for your next trip. The Great Sand Dunes is open all year round, 24 seven, and offers a diverse landscape depending on the time of the year. All visitors must have an entrance pass in order to access the park and all of the amenities. Simply visit the National Park Service government website to purchase a standard entrance pass, which is available for motorcycles or private vehicles. Larger groups in vans or buses can get in for a slightly higher price depending on the amount of people visiting. Or you can save a bit of money by purchasing the annual entrance park pass. This includes unlimited visits to all pass holders and family members in the vehicle for one year. There are also a few days in the year that you can get in for free, so consider visiting the Great Sand Dunes on one of these fee-free days. There's no entrance pass required on these days. Martin Luther King Day in January, first day of National Park Week in April, the Great American Outdoors Act in August, National Public Lands Day in September, and Veterans Day in November. When it comes to the best days and times of the year to visit the Great Sand Dunes, peak season starts in late May and continues through mid-June. This is when the weather is still mild and the sand is not as hot as it is later in the heights of summer. This is also when the Madano Creek is usually at its highest, making it a great excursion for families and kids. However, peak season is also usually the busiest and when the campgrounds, the visitor center, and parking lots are full to bursting. We recommend visiting the Great Sand Dunes during the week, if possible. During our recent trip, we visited on a Wednesday to a Thursday and saw very few people with plenty of parking available. The months of May and September are known for having some of the best weather and least amount of crowds at the Great Sand Dunes. Be prepared for all types of weather at the Sand Dunes, as you are completely exposed to the elements. There are no trees, no bushes to help buffer the wind or sun from just beating down on you. I recommend wearing multiple layers so you can put on or take off items as you need it. Sometimes the wind can make for a chilly day, while those super sunny days can become unbearably hot. Bring comfortable walking shoes or hiking boots, but be prepared to go barefoot if the sand isn't too hot or you have to walk across the creek. Don't forget about the footwear to protect your furry friends from the blistering hot sand that can reach temperatures of 150 degrees. And be prepared to get sand everywhere. This is a national park full of sand after all. There are no snack stations or water fountains at the Great Sand Dunes, so bring your own food and plenty of water. However, the visitor center does offer vending machines with snacks and drinks, but there's nothing at the dune entrance near the parking lot area. We also recommend bringing sunscreen, a lot of it, a sun hat or a cap, as well as sunglasses to protect your skin and eyes from too much sun. There are plenty of things to do at the Great Sand Dunes, whether you're visiting for a few hours, the entire day, or several days. The visitor center is a great first stop as you head into the park for the day. It has public bathrooms, a gift shop, small museum, snacks, drinks, and an observation point where you can take photos of the dunes. 
can also speak to any of the rangers to ask about the weather details, wildlife in the area, camping spots, and more. The visitor center is open year-round except for the winter federal holidays. And don't forget to grab a visitor guide and map on your way out to explore the park, or download the free guide via the website. As mentioned, during a very short period of the year from late May to mid-June, the Madonna Creek is available for splashing and playing. This wide and shallow creek bed offers a refreshing and cool way to relax near the sand dunes. In order to access the sand dunes from the parking lot, you'll have to traverse over the Madonna Creek. However, the water is very shallow and perfect for wading barefoot, skimboarding, or even tubing during the surge flow. Due to the shallowness of the creek, it's a perfect place for kids to build sandcastles Splash in the water while adults look on from the banks. Just past Madonna Creek is a nice selection of smaller dunes that are perfect for sandboarding and sand sledding. Inside the Airbnb we booked, sandboards and sand sleds were available to rent for the day, but there are also other shops in the nearby towns where you can rent boards and sleds. The closest location for renting boards is the Great Sand Dunes Oasis, which is only about four miles outside the park. Or check out Christie Mountain Sports in the town of Alamosa. Either way, we recommend getting to the rental spot early in the day so you have your pick of any of the rentals. Sandboarding is a lot like surfing or snowboarding, but you know, with sand. Which is a lot less forgiving when you're falling into it compared to water or some nice fluffy snow. So be ready to get some sand in places that you didn't even know was possible. Sand sledding is a bit easier, but nothing at all like sledding in the snow. You should still expect to crash, slide off your board and occasionally, and all of the pursuit of fun. From simply walking across the dunes to hiking to the top of the tallest dunes in the country, there is no shortage of hikes in the area. High Dune and Star Dune offer two of the best dune hikes and can take anywhere from two and a half to five hours to reach the summit of the dunes. The Sand Sheet Loop Trail is a wheelchair accessible trail that travels alongside the grasslands of the preserve. Or check out the nearby Montville Nature Trail or the Mosca Pass Trail both of which feature plenty of wildlife, small creeks, and wildflowers in the summer. Another popular activity to do in the Great Sand Dunes is camping. Opt for tent or RV camping at the Pinion Flats Campground or camp directly on the dunes. Backpacking permits are available year-round, but only by reservation on recreation.gov. And they are first come, first serve, with a maximum of 20 groups per night and 6 people per group. Choose from designated sites along the sand ramp trail, or enjoy primitive camping anywhere within the sand dunes themselves. Backpacking and camping on the dunes offers an incredible chance to sleep under the moon and stars. It's a secluded campsite that's quiet and with nothing but the clouds above you for miles. And the sand dunes might be one of the best places in the state for some top tier stargazing. With nearly no light pollution, very low humidity levels, many cloudless nights, and the higher elevation, it is easy to see thousands of stars dazzling the night sky that you wouldn't often be able to see. There are multiple cities near the Great Sand Dunes that offer lodging, with the main ones being Crestone and Alamosa. You can also stay in cities like Salida and simply drive south for about an hour and a half. For our trip, we chose to stay in Crestone at a Lux Airbnb complete with a main house and a primitive geodome that was set for being under the stars. This and other Airbnb retreats are in secluded locations at the base of the Sandra de Cristo Mountains. The house and geodome comfortably sleeps eight guests with four bedrooms and five beds. It features a full kitchen with upgraded appliances and two bathrooms. This luxe location offers gorgeous views, a seven person hot tub and private outdoor balcony. If you're planning to visit the Great Sand Dunes, we highly recommend staying in this luxury geodome retreat near a stone. But they're booking up quickly, so don't wait. Some other options for lodging near the Great Sand Dunes include Pinion Flats Campground, open from April to October only, the Great Sand Dunes Lodge, Great Sand Dunes Oasis Motel and Campground, Zapata Ranch and Lodge, Holiday Inn Express in Alamosa, the Fairfield Inn and Suites in Alamosa. And of course, you can seek out some more remote sites by camping on one of the dunes, but you'll have to backpack in on foot. You don't need a lot of time to visit the Great Sand Dunes. In fact, two to three hours is plenty of time to explore the initial area. However, we recommend spending at least an entire afternoon there. In addition to splashing in Madonna Creek, hiking up the dunes, sandboarding and sledding, 
There's also camping, hunting, fishing, and stargazing all available. Check out a free daytime or evening ranger program. Hike the Hidden Dune, one of the tallest dunes in North America, or explore a high elevation lake. The more time you have to spend at the dunes, the better. You can even watch the sunset or moonrise from the top of many of the dunes. Or drive your four-wheel high-clearance vehicle on the Madano Pass Primitive Road for some epic off-roading with a quick hike to Zapata Falls. We recommend using the National Park Service website to fully plan your visit. Get the latest updates and see weather predictions. Our trip to the Great Sand Dunes National Park was like no other. It was a fun two-day trip from Colorado Springs and we really hope to do it again soon.